Tarzan of the Apes, brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' vivid book. <laughs> Tarzan stops in his flight through the treetop. He hears James call for help, and with the speed of a striking snake, the ape man turns. Springing from limb to limb, swinging from trailing vine to swaying branch, he flashes through the dark corridors of the upper jungle turrets. On the little platform, Jane lashes with all her strength at Sheeta's slipping jaws. Again, she lifts the branch high above her. Again, she brings it down on Sheeta's head. Snarling, clawing, fighting, the leopard reaches with his giant paws for the platform. He catches the outside edge. Tensing of the mighty muscles in the great cap hauls himself over the shaking branches. Jane tries once more desperately to lick the leopard's toes. She defends his head beneath the toes, but he moves forward. Jane throws the branch down her. She reaches from the low hanging limb, swings herself clear of the platform. She just strikes out at her with striking, tearing claws. At Tarzan's call of warning, Sheeta stops, looks up. Crashing down from the treetop, Tarzan hurls himself on Sheeta's back. They roll over and over on the narrow ledge. Tarzan's fingers clutch at the brute's throat. Sheeta's hind feet strike out. Tarzan throws himself to one side, but he holds on. Makes a desperate effort to throw the ape man from him. They roll off the platform, down, down, crashing through the branches to the ground below. In an agony of despair, Jane pulls herself to the platform and drops down. Tarzan is on his feet. Peter's jaws snap at the ape man's thigh, but Tarzan twists himself clear. His knife is out. The blade flashes and flashes again as the bronze arm rises and falls with deadly rapidity. Sheeta howls in agony, tries to break away, but Tarzan's grasp on the brute's throat is secure. Sheeta, in one last despairing effort, throws himself to the ground. The ape man's steely muscles pin the leopard fast while the greenish yellow fire dies from the beast's eyes. Tarzan rises from the ground, places his foot on Sheeta's carcass, beats his broad chest with clenched fists, and raises his head to the skies. Back in the cannibal crowd, Clayton, Professor Porter, Darno, and Philander with Darno's sailors formulate plans for the future and their eventual escape. Well, there's a certain feeling of security being together in this hut. Yes, and I have posted sentries too. However, monsieur, although we have gained the respect, the situation is still anything but secure. Well, it's considerably better than before, just the same. Uh, do you think, Darno, that we now have these superstitious natives completely under control? Uh, no, monsieur, by no means. They believe, yes, that we have worked magic. But now, monsieur, one false move means not only death, but the most vicious torture that the human mind can devise. I feel that I must sustain Darno in his belief. Having assumed the roles of minor deities, we've placed ourselves in the position of forfeiting all human characteristics. Frankly, to me, the whole thing is ridiculous. Irrespective of whatever goes with the theory involved in all this black magic thought transfer. What I want to know is, if these blighters can do all this, how are we going to pull the wool over their eyes? Monsieur Clayton. These primitive peoples can do much that we of the West regard as impossible. But we of the West do many things that these natives do not understand, n'est-ce pas? Yes, I'll admit that. Then, for the sake of saving our skin, it will be well for us to play upon the natives with what we can do. Uh, their mentality is, as I think before, about six years. Now, can you try to understand what is passing through the mind of a six-year-old child? Certainly not. At the same time, while I'm not asking for an explanation of what's going to happen, I would like to have an explanation of what has happened. You refer, of course, to the Blacks' knowledge of Jane's disappearance and our search for her. Part of that. And also, if these Blacks know so much, why don't they know where to lay hands on this devil god they're so anxious to catch? My dear Clayton, you're getting into something very deep. And something that we cannot explain. Uh, you see, the witch doctor probably built up a very strong case in favor of this devil god being just that. A devil. A god. And on top of that, this pagan jungle friend of ours, I still assert Clayton that he is friendly, at any rate, by his actions, has completely upset the nation. They want to kill him, but... But, that's just it. They have had opportunity. But have they, Clayton? Remember, in every case, he may have surprised them. And also, they may be overcome by fear that their arrows fly wide or their 
Monsieur is Mr. Mark. A thousand things could happen. And do not forget also, Monsieur, that we were present when a message was brought in that this devil god had been seen in the trees with a white memsa. Yes, that's right, Donald. Then how can we tell? Possibly before that, a similar message was brought secretly to the witch doctor, and he, merely for the purpose of increasing his standing, claimed second sight or his powerful medicine. All of which I admit. And incidentally... All of this goes to discredit the theory of any genuine magic. I am not trying to convince you, Monsieur Platon. I am merely saying, wait, you will see. Uh, ah, that I take it is some sort of signal. A warning, perhaps, that the council is about to meet. I don't know whether or not you've noticed it, Professor, but there's a strong similarity between certain aspects of the ritual among these savages and those of some of the rites of ancient Egypt. Yes, Philander. I noticed that when I was tied to the stake. I was thinking, Father, that our knowledge of the ritual as laid down in the Book of the Dead might prove very valuable in cases which must of necessity arise. A, a very excellent thought, Philander. May we excellent a thought that, who knows, may save our lives. Pardon. Can I read? The Council awaits us, Monsieur. The Council awaits Charles. My Jew! What is it? The supposed witch doctor has insisted upon the poison. The poison? Tell yes, that. Trial of some sort by poison. Exactly, monsieur. To prove our superiority, we will have to drink the poison cup. The jungle which has awakened at Tarzan's call of victory falls again into a subdued murmuring. Tarzan pulls himself up to the platform, puts a protecting arm around Jane's trembling shoulder. Jane frightened? No. Oh. No. Oh, I did. It was too horrible. I struck and struck, but it kept on getting closer and closer. I didn't know what to do. I knew you weren't far away, but, but I thought surely the lover would kill me before you got back. As the torrent of words which Tarzan cannot understand falls from Jane's lips, Tarzan holds the trembling girl close in an instinctive gesture of protection and assurance that he has no English words to voice. Jane forces back the tears and tries to smile. You, you have no idea of my skin, how, how hard I, I'm trying not to, not to cry, trying to, to be brave. Oh, my skin, you can't understand. You don't know the meaning of fear. Fear? Fear? Yes, fear. You know the meaning of Jane frightened. Fear is something you may learn as a word. But you'll never know the feeling of it. Cheetah frightened Jane? Yes. Cheetah frightened man? No. No, White Skin. There's no use trying to explain to you. Any of the men I know, or I should say used to know, would have been as frightened as I. White Skin. Yes? White Skin. Jane go hot. Jane wants gun. Jane wants gun? Bang, bang? Yes. One? One? Oh, dear. You don't know the meaning of the word one. Yes, one. One. Let me see. Like. Like. Jane like go hut. Jane like take gun. Yes. Jane like go hut quick. Jane like take bang bang. That's it, White Sin. I'll feel much safer with a gun. Go quick, hut. No, White Sin. Sleep now. Yes. Jane sleep. No go hut. Jane no sleep. Go hut quick. Yes, that expresses it. Although I, I don't believe that I'll ever sleep after the tonight's experience. Jane Porter goes to her resting place in the little leafy alcove, and Tarzan stretches himself on the platform. The fearful jungle shadows lengthen and deepen as the moon pales and fades in the jet-black sky. The jungle's memory is short-lived. Already the fight is forgotten. Already the jungle has gone back to sleep. All but the beasts that prowl by night. And the jungle night ends as it began. Dango the hyena slinks from the underbrush, head raised, yapping at the dying moon with his hideous, mirthless laugh. 